It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. The Kyle Korver effect has gone missing from the Cleveland Cavaliers. And without it, their offense isn't nearly as potent as it could be. If you're wondering who's to blame for this, the answer can be spread from Korver to Tyron Liu to, yes, you guessed it, LeBron James. The best way to create three-point shots for Kyle Korver is running him ceaselessly around the court around pin down after pin down. Not only does it open up good looks for him from behind the arc, but his gravity draws the defensive focus, creating good looks for teammates. But this action is completely missing, and Cavs fans are surely saddened at the prospect that it won't come back. In a long day, without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. In the finals so far, his minutes have been cut from over 23 for the playoffs overall to less than 17. Of course, conventional wisdom would tell you he's a defensive liability and not worth having him out there against the most talented offense of all time. But he's been making defensive plays out here, and he's also got the highest net rating of all the regular rotation guys for the whole playoffs, and second highest in the finals. Where the coaching criminality lies is that they won't run a pin down for him. This possession was one of only two pin downs they ran for him all game long. So you're basically setting him up to fail when he spends most of his time holding out of the bottom of his shorts. The defense has been switching this action, which does go a long way towards blowing it up and not letting Corver get clean looks. But LeBron's effort to force the ISO against certain matchups has left Corver completely stagnant and easily guardable. The other big issue is the lack of Corver Kevin Love goodness on the weak side. When Love sets the pin down, he's a big body on the screen and a serious threat to pop out from three himself and Korver's gravity can suck in two defenders, leaving a cut to the basket and a great pass when LeBron is handling out top. In Game 2, they could barely get Korver's minutes to match up with Love's, and this was the only instance where they connected on a great back screen and cut to the hoop. The only one! If the Cavs have any hope of getting back into the series, they are going to have to hit more threes, and the only way to do that is to get Korver on track. To combat the switching, he needs to set his own screens first, something we've seen him do time and again on the weak side. But if he's forced to stand in place and not have the freedom to cut across the court and off of pin downs at full speed, the Cavs' chances of even being competitive are severely diminished. It's hard to fathom that Kyle Korver's game has gone a such a long way, way from where, where it we began. began. Especially since J.R. Smith has been terrible on both ends and gets twice as many minutes. I implore Tyron Lue to find more minutes for Korver, run more actions for him, and reap the benefits of better play on both ends of the floor. And you can rest assured that if they finally get him going in the half court, and I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you all, all about, about it, it when, when I, I see, see you, you again. again. Sports fans, make sure to hit the subscribe button and adjust your settings so you can get notified immediately when we drop another great NBA video. Let us know how you feel with a thumbs up and a comment. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in?